For this lecture, we'll cover uh, some of the main material from the neurons module, but we will specifically be focusing on resting and action potentials. Um, that's where most of the action is, uh, and by understanding these two parts of the process, um, it goes a really, really long way toward understanding really everything that you need to. Uh, many students report that the modules covered by Quiz 8, the neuron module and the nervous system module, um, are the hardest ones in the class. Uh, and I think I agree with that, um, but I think that they're difficult for different reasons. All right, so as we've talked about in class a little bit, that nervous system module, the one with all of those different brain parts, it's just a memory load. Right? Um, even with the reduction of terms that I'm going to be providing on Blackboard, um, even with the recoding technique that I recommended, um, it's a lot of information to, be, to keep track of. Right? So you really, if you want to do well, um, do focus on recoding like I demonstrated. Do focus on retrieval practice, but go beyond just the quiz, quiz questions. Um, and also use the spacing effect as much as you can. The neuron module, I think it's different. Um, here, there are far fewer terms that you need to keep track of, but the process is hard to understand. Um, and in my view, that makes the neuron module even more difficult than the nervous system one. Uh, I think one of the key difficulties with understanding the neuron material is that our ability to use strategies like self-references is limited. For example, consider the concept of diffusion, the tendency of particles to move from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration. A terrific self-reference for this concept is the experience of walking into your house and immediately knowing that someone is baking cookies. All right, the molecules responsible for the odor originated in the oven, that's the area of high concentration, and through diffusion they travel to the far reaches of the house, the areas of low concentration. Now the problem is, I don't think that self-reference works very well to help us understand the diffusion of potassium ions in a microscopic axon. Uh, in situations like this, when we don't have any real world experiences to connect to some kind of complex process, uh, we can sometimes try and understand it by using an analogy. Um, some of you might have experienced this in elementary or middle school when you first learned about the atom. Some teachers help their students understand atoms by pointing out that the atom is kind of like the solar system. The nucleus of the atom is like the sun, the electrons are like uh, the planets, and so on. Right? Of course, when you learn details of the atom, you learn that there are um, important differences between atoms in the solar system, but by providing beginning students with that connection to something that they already know, um, these teachers are actually helping their students to understand the new concept of atoms. In the case of neurons, I think the main things that are hard to understand are resting potential, and action potential. Um, and within that, there are the different parts of the, uh, the uh, neuron. So we get dendrites, soma, axon, axon terminal branches, and terminal buttons. Um, and then we've got um, two, or four types of ions, two positively charged ones, sodium and potassium, two negatively charged types of ions, chloride, and then other anions. Um, and then we've got these two forces that are acting on those different ions, diffusion um, and electrostatic pressure. All right, these diffusion and electrostatic pressure, they operate on those ions in the presence of a selectively permeable cell membrane, um, and they do that to maintain the resting potential. When a threshold of excitation is reached, an action potential is initiated. Channels open up on the axon, allowing sodium that had been stuck outside to rush to the inside. 
because of diffusion and extra electrostatic pressure. Since sodium is positively charged, the effect is that the inside of the axon now has a positive electrical charge in the exact spot where the sodium ions just entered. When that happens, potassium is forced out of the axon through electrostatic pressure. Then, this process repeats itself a little farther down the axon, and again, and again, until the tiny electrical charge reaches the terminal branches at the end of the axon. Now, if you are like many students, that explanation that I just gave you probably wasn't very helpful. It's still too abstract. Um, there's really nothing meaningful to connect it to. So instead, let's try an analogy. Okay. Um, what I've got on the screen now is the main material that I'm going to actually try to explain through that analogy. Um, and this is taken right out of the textbook. So uh, I actually recommend that if you have access to the book, that you pause this lecture right now and pull this section up so that you can see it while I'm talking about the analogy. And what we're going to do is we're going to imagine that those ions are actually people. Um, and those people um, are going to have a party. So we're going to call it the axon party because that's where um, the action and resting potential occur. So first, what I've done is I've drawn an act, uh, a neuron for you. Um, let me label some of the parts. So we have up on the top left, we've got our dendrites. Right? These are where incoming information from other neurons comes. Um, right? So think of them as the short branches that are connected to the cell body, the soma. Um, that soma then is where an action potential is initiated. And then that action potential, this electrical signal, travels down that one tube um, called the axon. Um, and you'll notice the uh, kind of the um, coating around the axon. Those are myelin sheaths. The uh, electrical signal travels down to the end um, <clears throat> where there are terminal branches. Um, and those terminal branches end at terminal buttons, and that's where the signal is going to send from this neuron to a neighboring neuron. On the next slide, we're just going to take the little section that I've circled here, and we're going to blow that up so we can look at a close-up view of that section of the axon nearest to the soma. So resting potential first. Uh, this is before any action happens. So obviously, this is before our axon party starts. The first actor in our little story is Anne. Anne is an anion. Um, anion is just a word that means negatively charged ion, right? Ion that has a negative electrical charge. So Anne um, is really negative. Okay. Um, she's so negative, in fact, that her parents um, are just continually annoyed by her, and they have actually grounded her. Okay. She cannot go out of the house, so she is stuck inside that part of the axon. Um, I hope you're looking at the part of the textbook that I recommended, because what I just explained is that um, the anion concentration um, um, because uh, anions are impermeable to the cell membrane. That means they're stuck inside. They can't get out. Okay. So let's add our second actor, and that's potassium. Okay. Um, when I was first learning about the chemicals and chemical signals, I always had a hard time remembering that potassium um, had a symbol of K. Um, and so let's actually come up with a weird name to, to try and remember this. We're going to call potassium K-pot to remind us that it's potassium. Right. K-pot, potassium, he is positive. Right. 
happy, optimistic, you know, just a great guy. Everybody loves K-pop. Okay? Um, and because everybody likes K-pop, um, he's actually free to come and go. Right? So he can hang out on the inside or he can go outside. And so you can see there is some of them inside, there is some of them outside the axon. Okay? Um, now, there are two forces that are acting on K-pop right now. One is diffusion. Right? Um, there's lots of K-pop inside, right? Um, and so he kind of wants to get alone by himself sometimes. So that kind of forces him to the outside. That's high concentration of K-pop on the inside, um, flowing to the lower concentration areas on the outside. But at the same time, there is an opposite force attracting K-pop back to the inside. And that's Ann. All right, because I didn't mention this, but Ann is absolutely gorgeous. And K-Pot just wants to hang out with her. Right, so the positive K-Pot being attracted to the negative Ann, that of course is electrostatic pressure. Right, so with K-Pot being forced out through, through diffusion and then being drawn back in through his attraction to Ann, the electrostatic pressure, um, it kind of reaches an equilibrium. So there's a kind of a stable concentration of K-Pot inside and outside. Remembering of course that Ann She's stuck inside all the time. So our third actor, chloride. We'll call her Clara. Clara the chloride. Um, she is also negative. I guess all women are. Um, um, but the difference here is Clara, she's actually free to come and go as well. Okay? Um, and honestly, once I've explained K pot, there's really nothing interesting to say about Clara because she's really um, kind of the same the same idea. Right? Um, turns out there is more of her on the outside than the inside, so diffusion actually forces her to come back in. Okay? Um, and for electrostatic pressure, um, she is actually attracted to the enormous positive charge that exists on the outside of the axon. Um, and that comes from, I think, the most interesting actor in the axon party, and that's so sodium. I'm going to call sodium Nate for its chemical signal. So Nate the sodium. Oh my gosh, Nate, such a positive guy, All right? Positive, positive, positive all the time, um, and he is all over the place on the outside of that axon, and he can't get in. You know why? Because Anne's parents hate Nate. That's probably why they grounded her originally, right? Um, and so they said, look, K-Pot, he can come over. Cl Clara, she can come over. But whatever you do, do not let Nate inside this house. So he's stuck on the outside. But he wants to get in. He wants to get in for two really good reasons. One, diffusion. Look to your left. I see another Nate. Look to my right. I see another Nate. I got to get out of here. I got to go someplace where there are no other Nates. Um, that would be inside the axon. So I'm kind of pounding at the door trying to get in. Uh, the other reason Nate wants to get in, well, of course, Anne's in there. Told you. She's gorgeous, All right? He wants to get in there too. And so both diffusion and electrostatic pressure are forces acting on Nate saying, get inside that axon, get inside that axon, but he can't because the door is locked. And there you have it, our resting potential. Notice that because Nate is all over the place on the outside, um, just far outnumbering how much Clara there is on the outside. There's a little bit of potassium on the outside, K-pot as well. Um, the outside of that axon is, uh, has a positive electrical charge. The inside, primarily because of Anne, there's a lot of her on the inside, um, has a negative electrical charge. That's 
what resting potential is. Negative on the inside, positive on the outside. So now, let's look at the action potential. This is the party. Well, when the party starts, what are you going to do? We're going to start letting people in. We're going to open the door. Um, those are the, uh, the, the uh, sodium channels that open up. As soon as that door opens up, what do you think Nate's going to do? I mean, he's been waiting all day to get inside. All right? As soon as that door opens, bam, he rushes to the inside. So now we've got a bunch of sodium inside the axon, inside the house, Right in that one specific spot, right where that where the gate where the door opened up. And so what we've got is a tiny positive electrical charge caused by the presence of a bunch of sodium, right, right in that one spot. Now what happens? Well, look at poor K pot. Right. You ever been to a party where you're the first one there um, and uh, you kind of get to hang out with everybody, whoever you want to, and nobody's in your way, um, and then all of a sudden the party starts getting crowded, okay? um, and you got to decide what to do. Right? Are you going to hang out, you know, bumping into people all night, or you're just going to go someplace else? Okay? Well, k des decides I'm going to go someplace else. So... Because of all that Nate surrounding him now, the electrostatic pressure, right, the positive charge of Nate and versus the positive charge of K-Pot is going to force that potassium to leave the party, to leave the axon at that point. And what happens next? It's actually pretty simple. Next, the police come. party's over. But wait, no, no, no. Instead of having the party over, let's just move the party. Okay. Um, so these kids, um, they're really kind of stupid. Um, so really all they do is they just move the party over one house over. Okay. So the exact same thing happens a little tiny bit over toward the end, toward the terminal branches. Um, same thing happens. Nate's stuck on the outside electrostatic pressure and diffusion, um, wanting him to get in, but he can't because the gates are, the, the, the door is closed and stuck on the inside. Clara can go in and out. k -Pot can go in and out. Party starts. Action potential. Bam. Nate rushes in. Cops come. Party moves over again. And that keeps happening again and again and again, all the way down to the end, till you reach those terminal branches. And that is where this signal, which is right now this just electrical signal, is going to be transmitted to a next neuron over through the process of neural transmission. So this is figure three. It's actually the exact same one that's in the textbook. Um, and what we want to do is explain the process of excitatory postsynaptic potentials and inhibitory postsynaptic potentials. Um, what they are are um, little tiny electrical charges that are caused by neurotransmitters floating across this tiny gap. Right? So notice, in the presynaptic terminal button, right, this is the end of the axon, and there are tiny like bubbles um, that are called vesicles. They stir, store rather these neurotransmitters, the chemicals. When the action potential reaches the terminal buttons, those vesicles open up and release the neurotransmitters into the tiny gap in between a sending neuron and a receiving neuron. And so that postsynaptic spine you see la labeled there with the receptors, um, that is usually on the dendrite of the next neuron over. Okay? So those those uh, neurotransmitters, the little tiny dots there, those are chemicals that are going to float across and they're going to land 
on those receptor sites. Um, think of those receptor sites as like locks and then think of the neurotransmitters like keys and so the correct key has to fit into the right lock and when it does it will open up that receptor site and that's going to allow ions to float inside the membrane of that postsynaptic spine. Okay? If the ions that float inside make that second neuron more positive, like sodium or calcium, then that's sending a tiny signal to that next neuron that that neuron should also have an action potential, start its own axon party. That's what an excitatory postsynaptic potential is. If, when those neurons cross over and open up channels, they allow the, the next neuron to become more negative, either by letting negative ions in or positive ions out, then that's what we would call an inhibitory postsynaptic potential. It's a tiny, tiny message that tells that next neuron over to not send its action potential, to not transmit a signal. And so what's happening is that neuron is collecting all sorts of different EPSPs and IPSPs, right? And then basically adding them up. And if there are enough excitatory postsynaptic potentials, Right, enough little signals saying, yeah, 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 yeah. Send an action potential, have a party. Then that axon is gonna initiate its action potential. The party's gonna occur down its axon and that process is gonna be repeated as it sends that signal through its terminal branches to a bunch of other neurons as well.